My name is Jason Samard, and I am the founder of Sims Coaching Systems. I'm here with my co-founder, Joe Moretti, and we're here on the Seven Figure Real Estate Podcast, the podcast you didn't know you even needed. Everyone, get your notepads out. Let's go. We're going to bring you value week over week, and we're actually going to be a lot of fun, and we hope to make you laugh out loud. Subscribe to our channel. Check the content out. If you're looking to take this to a whole nother level, we got you covered. All right, guys. On this week of the Sims War Room podcast, it's just me, Jason Samard. Unfortunately, Joe Moretti uh, couldn't be here. I know he would have wanted to be here if he could, but it just didn't work out. But that's okay. I'm pretty happy right now, not going to lie. My favorite team in the world, the Kansas City Chiefs, the greatest football team in the NFL, is going to the Super Bowl. I'd love to hear your predictions, guys. Is it going to be the Eagles? Is it going to be my Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey? Can they do it again? Uh, man, I'm pretty excited. What a game. What a finish yesterday. Always comes down to a field goal with them and the Bengals. So anyways, wow. Pretty pumped for today. Uh, I was looking forward to having Joe, but I'm actually going to go through something that's really near and dear to me. I'm going to go through something called my 12 guiding principles to a seven-figure life. This changed this changed me in a big way. And these are exactly sort of the steps that I took in order to get there. So just thought I'd give you guys a little something different. It's not going to be a long podcast today, but hopefully um, you guys can take something from these 12 guiding principles that I'm about to hit you with. So number one, if you want to build a very successful real estate business, 12 guiding principles... Number one is you need leads, 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 an abundance of opportunities. You want consistent opportunities coming in a flow of them. This will give you confidence. This will give you the ability to build up a database. And as you work your skills and you become better at what you do, you can become financially rewarded for that. So having an abundance of opportunities has made a massive impact for me. Number two, you need a very solid CRM system, a client relationship management system that you use so that you can obviously put proper follow-up sequences, notes, that you can have proper systems in your database as you generate these opportunities. So if you don't have one of these right now and you're listening to this, you need to get yourself a solid CRM system. Most of you probably have one available to you and you should. The next thing is you need to have great sales and communication skills. If you are not able to articulate your value, you're not able to have a value-based conversation with somebody where you can help them self-discover, that means you need to focus on your skills, which is really, really important. Having some skills in anything in life is gonna allow you to reach higher levels. Your goal should be to become a master of your craft and what you do. So be a lifelong student. That's part of number three. Number four is EQ versus IQ. Know what you're good at and what's your one thing. See, everybody has one thing that they are really, really good at. And the challenge is most people don't know what that is. And so if you can get the self-awareness to find out what your superpower is and you can build your life around that one thing, you'll actually be financially compensated way more than trying to be a generalist, a jack of all trades. In fact, the most Highly compensated people in the world are specialists at one thing, not 10, one. So remember that. Some of you have a very high IQ. You might be super intelligent, but that doesn't always translate into emotional intelligence, which is the ability to connect with others. There's a reason often engineers don't make the best salespeople. They're not often the ones selling the products that they've built. Why? Because they speak on a level that most people won't be able to understand. Number five, and this is very important if you want to scale up and have a, a seven-figure lifestyle, you need to have leverage. Higher on personality versus, and fit versus fancy degrees. I can tell you, I've met a lot of very, very successful people in my life, um, and most of them, believe it or not, weren't necessarily um, college graduates. They didn't have all the fancy degrees. Contrary to what you might believe, somebody who has had maybe a soft upbringing, silver spoon upbring, upbringing, may not necessarily work out. You know, if they went to the fanciest schools and life was pretty easy for them, chances are they may not do well in the hard knocks life of real estate. So something to keep in mind. I personally would take somebody with a great attitude 
work ethic, and mindset any day of the week over somebody who has a ton of fancy experience, truthfully. I can teach anybody the skills, but the attitude is really hard to coach to, okay? Somebody has a bad attitude, that's a tough one. I don't care how smart they are. Action, this is huge. Commit 110% to massive, massive levels of action. If you look at anybody who succeeds in real estate and has done it at a high level, they are action takers all day, every day. Create a very simple activity plan and massive levels of action need to work need to go towards that. That helps. Uh, Number seven, have a business plan. Keep it very simple. One page is plenty. If you haven't seen our one page business plan, we're happy to give you a copy. Just shoot us a message, info at simscoachingsystems.com. We'll send you what our one page business plan looks like. But you need to make things very simple for yourself. You should not require an engineering degree in order to understand what you need to do every day. Set some personal goals, set some financial goals, set some relationship goals. The big theme in 2023 for everybody should be health, wealth, and relationships. All three of those things together will make for a happier life. Serve others abundantly. How are you helping make other people's lives better? How are you giving more in value than you'll ever receive in payment? That is a philosophy from my favorite book of all time called The Go-Giver. In that book, it gives you some tenets that if you followed those in your life, you will have more abundance than you could ever dream of. For me, I never think what's in it for me. I always think, how can I help that person achieve what they're looking for? And the more you make it about other people and how you can help them win, the more the universe will bless you in return. Never make it about you. Too many of you are making short-sighted decisions in your life, which are, well, how does this benefit me? Why would I do that for you? Like, what am I going to get for it? And I can tell you that I've met a lot of takers in my life, and I can tell you unequivocally, givers will outperform them in all facets of life in the long run, any day of the week. Be a giver. Always look to give people energy, not be the person that's taking energy from others. Number nine, this is a big one. Invest in people. You're Your people are your greatest asset. One of the things that's helped me tremendously in my life is I'm able to see somebody's potential. I can see their upside. Once you can unlock, help people unlock their upside and their potential, it's incredible how much impact that can make, not only on their life, but your own life as well. Um, In business, it's always about win-win. How can we build wealth together? It's not about I, it's about we. How do we make money together? How can we succeed? So the idea that you surround yourself with really good people is really, really important as well, okay? Your people, again, are your biggest asset. Your network is your net worth. If you surround yourself with giving people, people that are on the same war path as you, that really want the best for you, and you want the best for that, and you're all working collectively together, it's amazing how much you can build, okay? A healthy wolf pack always outperforms a single wolf. I say that all the time, but it's true. Next thing is number 10. This is called counterbalance. We do not have, there's no such thing as balance. But here's what I would suggest. If you've blocked an hour in your time, in your schedule, to dedicate to maybe spending with your spouse, become obsessed with that hour. Be in the moment. Be present. How are you connecting with them, right? Don't don't have any distractions. Have your phone turned off. Literally give 1,000% in that moment. If you've dedicated two hours to business development in your schedule, that's all you focus on. Become obsessed in that two hours on business development. If you are going to do content, become obsessed with that content for that hour. Allow yourself to be obsessed in whatever it is that you're doing for the scheduled time that you've blocked for it. And that'll help you have what I call counter balance because it's impossible to do multiple things at once. Ladies, I know, I know you try. Believe me, I watch my wife and she tries to do five things at once. But what happens is I watch her get extremely stressed out and then I have to deal with the brunt of it. So do one thing at a time. Block in one thing and that's all you do. Multitasking doesn't work. There's science that proves it. I know some of you will comment, please do, but it doesn't work. Uh, Marketing. Pick two or three marketing pillars in your business. Don't, Don't have 10 things. Pick two or three. For example, for us, internet leads was a big part of our business plan. Number two was social media. 
And number three was having strong referral businesses. Now you may have sub pillars underneath those, but having three things that we focused on in business in our real estate company allowed us to make decisions really quickly. If it's not one of our pillars, we don't do it. That's it. Simple. You should be able to make lightning fast decisions as an entrepreneur. In fact, the number one killer of a business is not being able to make decisions quick enough. Too many of you are missing out on opportunities because you're overthinking the opportunity. And that's why having a one-page business plan and solid pillars in your business allows you to be decisive. See, decision and action is rewarded in business, not perfection and over-planning and overthinking. Okay, so for any of you listening with analysis paralysis, get out of your own way. Life rewards the C student action taker, not the A student overanalyzer. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. Look around. When you see somebody at a gas station in a fancy car, you don't think, oh, they must have a fancy degree. You think, wow, they're probably an entrepreneur or maybe a drug dealer. But ultimately, the point I'm trying to make here is it's the action takers that get rewarded the most. And then number 12, this is really important. You should be a student for the rest of your life. Every day, you should constantly be looking to learn something new. And learning isn't always listening to a podcast. It's not always listening or reading a book. Learning could be an experience. Maybe you had a disagreement with somebody and you learned a new way to handle a situation. Maybe you had a new experience that you encountered in your work. Very important that every day you take time near the end of your day, and you just reflect on the events that happened. What was my one lesson that I gained today? If you could ask yourself that question every day, hey, what's one thing that I learned from today? What's one thing that I could do to be better? It's amazing the compound effect over one year. That's 365 lessons that you will have learned in one year. Think about that. Every day, just one thing. If you could just summarize your day, what did I? what's the one thing that I learned about myself? It'll change your life. Guys, one thing too I want to end on, motivation, anybody that's seeking motivation, it's going to be fleeting. Motivation is fleeting. Even like the most motivated person has days where they're not motivated. So if you're trying to build your life on motivation and waiting for it to just magically show up, it's not going to happen. Just so you know, life's about discipline and consistency. I'll give you a perfect example. This morning, I absolutely did not want to get up and go to my workout this morning. I did not want to go and do our academy calls and our coaching calls today. Like mentally, I was not in the best place. But guess what? I showed up. I did my workout. I did my calls. I did my academy. And I felt way better for doing it because I showed up. Had I not showed up today, this could have compounded into tomorrow. I don't feel that. I don't feel like doing tomorrow. And then the next day, and next thing you know, I'm not in line with my goals anymore. I'm off track. So just know that even the most motivated person, and I'm very motivated, ask anybody, Paige, like anybody around me here knows, I'm very motivated, believe me. But I have days where I'm not motivated. But my discipline and my consistency and my commitments that I make to myself and the people around me are important. I have a why that is so strong that fuels me that even on the toughest day, I'm showing up. And that's really, really important. For me, my why is I want to make a meaningful impact in the people that I've chosen to surround myself with, which are business partners. For example, Paige and Ryan and Joe and all these people that work within our companies. I have made a commitment that I want to make an impact in their lives. I want them to be able to have the best lives possible, and I want to build these companies with them. And so having that means that I have to be able to look myself in the mirror. If I don't show up, I have to look Paige in the eye and say, Paige, I let you down. And I don't want to have that conversation. I never want to look you in the eye and be like, I've let you down. Ryan, I never want to look you in the eye and say, I let you down. I might be tough on you guys, but believe me, I'm 10 times tougher on myself. It's because I care about you. And my why is so strong and so deep that even on the days where I'm not motivated to do something, I will do it. So remember that, okay? You have days every day that you are not gonna to wanna to do, or moments in the day where you're not gonna to wanna to do something, but with discipline and consistency, you'll get it done. So there you go. This is the podcast for this week. I hope you guys got some valuable little nuggets, a little information there, a little different than some of the other episodes that we've done, but we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for allowing us to do what we love every day. Thank you for the listeners that are listening to our podcast. I hope you're getting value. If there's other topics you'd like us to cover, please message us, let us know. If you're getting value from the podcast, let us know that too. 
it encourages us to keep going. So thank you so much, everybody. I hope this was valuable. <laughs>